Now, if you would, imagine you're laying down at the dental office and I come wheeling up behind you and I start jabbing at your teeth with this pokey little instrument. You know what I'm doing? I'm checking to see if you have the most common disease in the world, dental cavities. Dental cavities affect up to 90% of school-aged children and I do pediatric dentistry and I can confirm that number seems to be fairly accurate. So cavities are caused by bacteria in your mouth fermenting a particular food, a non-essential food at that, and it ferments this non-essential food into acids. And these acids proceed to eat holes through the hardest substance in your body, tooth enamel. Perhaps that's a pretty big clue that maybe we shouldn't be eating so much of this non-essential food. So what is this non-essential food that causes bacteria to eat holes in the hardest substance in your body? It's actually carbohydrates. So proteins and fats don't cause cavities. Carbohydrates is our culprit here. Now I'd like to add some historical context to this. If we were to take all of modern humans, Homo sapiens existence, which is roughly 300,000 years, right up there, that's the oldest Homo sapien mandible, 300,000 years. And if we were to put all 300,000 years on a 24 hour clock, what we see is for the first 23 hours, largely the fossil record shows we're free of cavities. And while we have a hard time keeping our teeth for one lifetime today, teeth preserved for millions of years in the fossil record. And for these first 23 years, our teeth were doing pretty well, but something happened just one hour ago at 23 hours. And that is when our teeth took a turn for the worse. And we see the rise of dental cavities. And this coincides with the agricultural revolution, the cultivation of crops, and the rise of a particular non-essential food in the diet. For example, in North America, we can look at carbon isotopes and we can document the rise of corn consumption and the rise of cavities. So I was recently taking this online continuing education course about nutrition and oral health. And I was curious, you know, what are they recommending to dentists to recommend to their patients about what we should be eating for oral health? And this course was roughly broken up into two halves. In the first half, they were talking about the etiology of decay, basically what causes cavities. And they, tell, they told us what I just told you, bacteria in your mouth ferment carbohydrates into acids and they eat holes in your teeth. And so they talked about karyogenic foods, ca cavity causing foods. These are the high carbs, the sugar, the refined grains, especially the refined simple sugars because there's more surface area for the bacteria to ferment and turn into acids. And then they went on to talk about the anti-karyogenic foods. These are the foods that don't cause cavities. And these are the ones that are low in carbohydrates and higher in protein and fats because protein and fats don't cause cavities. And so these are foods like meat and eggs and dairy and fish. And then the second part of this course went to teach nutritional counseling. And so this is the part where they were telling us what to tell patients. And they went on to recommend the healthy eating plate. Look at that plate. It's 70 plus percent carbohydrate based foods. And if we zoom in and look under healthy protein, a term I dislike almost as much as quote unquote healthy fat, which we will get to in a little bit, but under healthy protein, they're telling us we want to avoid red meat and cheese. Like these recommendations directly contradict what they just told us. And I think this is one of the reasons why we have this situation today where nine out of 10 dentists aren't recommending a low carb diet, even though we know carbohydrates are responsible for the most common disease in the world. So although we have normalized cavities today, they're not normal. It's a sign of pathology, and it's often a sign that we're eating too much of a particular non-essential food that makes up over half of the modern diet. 